Hello everyone, how are you today? It's Kay. So this is the 13th of November 2021 on Saturday. So I hope you're having a great, great weekend today. So uh, since the market is closed, I will talk about some psychology or mindset uh, topic for today. And this is an open question, so uh, if you can just let me know uh, what kind of questions we have in terms of risk management and psychological management, please feel free to comment on the chat and we discuss on these topics. So yeah, let me just get ready quickly, hold on. So uh, this is Saturday and this is a relaxing day for myself. So, uh, yeah, so let's see. Okay, so... Alright, let's see who's here first. I can see some comments in chat. Alright, Carbon Fiber, thank you for joining. And uh, H. Bashard, good to see you. And Chrome Watt, Vipin, Blackwater, good to see you. Thank you for joining. And Roge. And uh, Wayudi, good to see you too. Thank you for joining. All right. Oh, thank you for the reminder, Blackwater, for the like button. Yeah, if you can press like button, that would be great to keep me going. All right, you meet. Good to see you here. All right, uh, Vitihi, good to see you here. He says, GBPINR, can you analyze it? Would clear my view. All right, let's check the GBPINR soon all right victor mr fernandez taran good to see you thank you for joining and job moss and gabby good to see you and hui and uh, prof flavo Flavio, good to see you here all right won ivan sofian good to see you all right so speaking of the uh the psychology um, today, first, I would like to talk about the psychology of, uh, you know, trading, especially when you're trading at the entry timings. Because, uh, you know, when you trace, when you trade, of course, you follow the trend direction, and when you see a good setup, then simply you take a trade, and the question is. How is your emotion state at the time of the entry? Would you feel worried? Would you feel excited? Would you feel happy? Would you feel concerned when you have positions? And same question for exit. How do you feel when you exit the position? When you exit with a loss, how do you feel? When you exit with a profit, how do you feel? And these kind of emotions we have to monitor by ourselves as we take trades. So that's why I recommend everybody to track your records, not only these numbers or, or the, uh, the market, uh, you know, which market you traded, but also I would like you to track your emotional state also. Like uh, you make a comment on your trades and uh, because uh, and you monitor along the way because sometimes you feel very excited to trade and you don't feel anything when you exit but sometimes you feel a bit concerned when you buy or sell and you take a trade and at the time of exit you feel very sad sometimes even if your uh, your profit or loss will be the same as previous trades you feel differently and this is very, very important to monitor because after all, we're all different and our psychology is all different. So, like uh, when you are trading with uh, less emotion, I think that will be a goal. So, because before, when I was a newbie, I was losing trades and when I was losing trades, Sometimes I felt very sad, I got so frustrated, especially when I had some consecutive losses, 
I felt very frustrated. But sometimes I didn't feel any frustrations. I didn't feel anything bad, even if I have some losses. And that was because I was following my strategy and I was confident on my strategy and I was able to accept whatever it happens after my trace. And on this kind of state of emotion, um, I, do, I didn't, I felt like less stress, less frustration. But uh, when I start to start not to believe my own system, not to trust my own strategy, then when I lose, I felt more frustrations. So I think uh, like this psychology or emotion uh, will be different depending on your situation, depending on your uh, yeah, the character, of course. So I think that is very important to track because this part uh, are kind of hard to track, difficult to trace. You can trace the, the numbers or uh, where you take trade and which price level you entered, which price level you exited, what position size you went for, lot sizing, and uh, the result, win or lose, and how many pips you lose, how many pips you win. These numbers can be, can be uh, monitored easily, but emotion is something that is invisible, and that's why it's also a very difficult track. But I think th this part is also a very important track. So that's my recommendation. So uh, yeah, so let's see. Robertson says scared. Yeah, so when you feel scared, then um, I think that's also related to the confidence. If you're confident on your strategy, then you feel you might not feel scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see. All right. Good to see you, everyone. Thank you for joining on this relaxing Saturday. This is just a relaxing and just a chat conversation today. So I might look at some pairs and I want to talk about some psychology or money management depending on the chat and the requests. So this is kind of open and free discussion. So let's talk about, let's look at the uh, USC INR as requested. So let me go to trading view and let me type that one. USC INR and I just pick this one. Right, so let's take a look at the daily chart and see what's happening right now. So, alright, so here is the market and yeah, so this is range. First of all, it's range because the Kumo's flat, Jun-sen flat, but Chikou span broke the candle and also the Tenkan-sen is pointing downwards. And this is range as per bigger picture this uh in a bigger scope but in the short term it's bearish and i can see a couple of bounces by tenkan sen in the daily chart and uh yesterday and the day before it was resisted also so uh, my view is bearish it can break the kumo and continue to be bearish is my view And so also um, yesterday and the day before, there were some uh, weeks pointing upwards and I can see that there is a resistance here. So this is, I think, bearish to me. Yeah, so that's one. Um, let's take a look at the weekly time frame. All right. Oops, sorry. I think I have... I set the screen full, so sorry, let me squeeze my face. There you go, okay, sorry about that. So this is USA INR, and let me cover the daily chart once again. So daily chart, 
you can see that the Kuma flat, Kijun Sen flat, and Chiko span broke, but now it's retracing backwards. But you can see that the market has been resisted by the Tenkan Sen many times, like this. So, my view is bearish this way. But if the market breaks the Tenkan Sen, then it can retrace back to the Kijun Sen. But that will be the short term. In the long term, I'm not sure which way it's going because Kumo and Kijun Sen are flat right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that will be my view. So let me pick up some other comments now. Jav Moss says, uh, What is your opinion about Frex? How slow is everybody going to crypto? I had a trade open for two weeks, very slow. I think Forex market is dead feel like going to crypto. Okay. Yeah, so Forex is slow, slower than the crypto for sure. But it doesn't mean that you can make more profits. You know, the Forex is slow, but uh, if you look at the lower time frames, lower than the daily time frames, it trends every week. And cryptos trends also but uh, ANA goes up and down very fast, but at the same time, the risk is higher. Uh, if you don't know the risk management and cryptos, then I think you can lose the account so easily. And personally, I prefer Forex, Forex market still, because um, first of all, I'm familiar with the Forex market. I have been trading for the last eight years, and I'm so familiar with the Forex market, and also, um, I know what's working, what's not working in the Forex market. And uh, I have experience in Forex, and that's why I simply play the Forex. And now I'm shifting myself to, or well, I'm not totally shifting, I'm diversifying my asset into the stock market and indices. So, um, it depends on which time frame you look at, and also depending on your preference for smart markets. All right, yes, good to see you, everyone. Thank you for joining. All right, so let's cover the next one. Uh, Gayan says last two weeks CAD was weak, CADJPY. So yeah, CADJPY was weak, but it's just retracing backwards. And since the price is now in between Kijun and Kumon, this is a range. So simply, I stay away in this condition. So we're not sure which way it's going. In this case, you can take the the Kijun Sen here. The Kijun Sen is pointing upwards, but uh, technically the market is below the Kijun Sen. So this Kijun Sen angle can be fake. And also, uh, like I mentioned on about the single span A a couple of days ago, single span A is still below the previous single span A level. And this is flat Kumo. So that's why in the long term or mid term, we're not sure which, which way it's going. So uh, we have to see the trending market in either daily chart or the forward chart and take trace. So if you look at the forward chart, this is also flat because the Kijun Sen is flat and Chikou span too close with the previous candle. So this is a range. So it might be supported at this support level 90.43 and goes up in range continuously. So this is where we have to be patient and because we don't know simply which way it's going. We can just draw the line like this way and it looks like this is bearish. So it might be traced back to the trend line or the Kumo and continue to bearish. All right, so yeah, that is my view on the CAD. And tomorrow, 
on this uh, weekly forecast, I will talk more about these pairs on the weekly chart. So, uh, yeah, so that will be the topic for tomorrow also. All right, good to see you, good to see you here. Um, let's see, so PNQ, uh, he says, is it possible to take a long position in gold? I always hit break even. Do you have any tips? Also, do you know how to keep yourself calm and be emotionless? Um, all right, so let's take a look at the gold. So, all right, so gold is now uptrending. So this is in the forward chart, but let me look at the daily chart. So daily chart is going up right now. And it is about to break the resistance level of 1868.46. And now Kumo's flat, Hijun Sen flat, so it might retrace backwards next week. So in this case, I simply wait for the breakout of the resistance and look for the buy chance afterwards. Um, so, so that's my scenario. Or if it, the market might retrace backwards and it might go back to the previous resistance level of 1832.74 and continue to go up this way. So I'm drawing these two scenarios right now in my head and look for where to buy right now. And since the market reached to the time cycle, this uh, the 15th of November is actually the time cycle Henkabi here. So uh, it may continue to go up if it breaks. That is also my view. And also, if you look at the time price theory, the market is now on the V target. So once it breaks, it could go up to the E target, which is 1906.11. Otherwise, it might be traced backwards to the resistance, the previous resistance or the Kijun Sen next week. So that is my view. And uh, so he also put, uh, put a question. He says, uh, do you know how to keep yourself calm and be emotionless? I think uh, there is no one answer to it. I think I'm sure there will be multiple answers, millions of answers to it. But one of the answers I think I think it's confident is that the uh, like this if you create scenario and if you can uh, you know if you can uh, expect these market scenarios in your head then that will make you calmer and less emotion because uh, for example here in this case if you only expect the market breaks resistance and goes up if it doesn't happen then it might create your frustration. So myself, I always draw two scenarios in my head. If the market goes up this way, then what should I do? If the market reverses backwards this way, then what should I do? With these two scenarios in my head, I monitor chart and take trades. In this way, you can be less emotion. Otherwise, emotion can take you. Um, so it's like it's like the market uh, you know emotion is not a bad thing and you know you you can be emotion and take trades of course but how to deal with emotion is more important in my opinion and you can be less emotion once you once you um, once you have a scenario in your head and once you know how to deal with this changing situation in the market. So I hope I answered that question. All right, so let's see. Let's move on to the next comment here. Um, Mr. Fernandez says, what about frustrations when losing? Okay. So frustrations when losing is also a big topic of all time. 
yeah, I think uh, frustration with um, when losing is uh, very big because uh, sometimes you lose like consecutively. So if it's just one loss, then you might feel okay. But if you start to lose twice, three times, and four times, you have a frustration. You have more frustration. And because of this frustration, you try to win back the previous losses and you lose more. This is a typical habit of these losing traders. So to prevent from you doing these you know, losing trades with emotional trades, uh, you can follow my rule. My rule is if, you, if I lose three times per day, then I never take trades on that day. So if I lose three times consecutive, so if I lose once, it's okay. If I lose twice, it's okay too. But if I lose three times consecutively, then I stop trading on that, on that day. Even if I find strong markets, strong trending markets, and even if I find, if I, if I find many, many confirmations to, to trade on this, on that day. If I lose three times consecutive, then I never trade afterwards. It's my rule. In this way, you can keep yourself calm and you have less frustration. So, uh, so that's also actually one of the ways to deal with the frustration when losing. And also the other one, the other way to deal with the frustration when losing is like I mentioned before, you create scenario in your head. So, so let's say in this case, so this is about psychology, but if in this case, if the market breaks the resistance level and goes up this way, then you make profit when you're buying it. But if the market reverses backwards from here, then you lose, simply speaking. So that's either way, you win or lose. So, but when you trade, especially when you spend hours for analysis, or if you spend hours to wait for the edge to come, and once you capture the edge to buy, finally you bought it, so you feel excitement. You feel, I, I, I just bought it because I got confirmations, I followed my strategy and rules and discipline, I waited enough to buy here. So you bought it here, let's say the breakout, you bought it, and afterwards, the market reverses backwards this way. And then you might frustrate it because you thought it's going to go up, but the market reverses backwards. And this is also, uh, you know, what happens, you know, in the market. No matter how confident you are, no matter how many hours you spend for analysis, the market just reverses backwards right after you enter the market. So sometimes, I felt like the market is watching me and the market is very mean to me. Like, they want me to lose. It's like my psychology before. But uh, now I don't feel so because even if I buy here at the breakout, uh, and even if I create the scenario to go up from here, at the same time, I also create scenario if the market reverses backwards scenario. And I think about when to exit, when I buy, with a loss. And with this mindset, I take trades. And even if the market goes backwards, I simply exit with less frustration and less emotion. But if I only expect the market goes up this way, and if it doesn't, then I might be frustrated. Especially when I exit with a loss, I will be frustrated. So trading is all about the probabilities and you cannot be 100% right. So the way to do is to create these scenarios, multiple scenarios in, in your head before you take trades and execute and monitor afterwards. Monitor the market afterwards and see how it goes. And simply if it reverses backwards, then you better exit. And the whole process should be included in your strategy.
And in this way, you have less emotion. Is my advice. Yeah, so I think, uh, yeah, so that, that's my advice, basically. All right, so let's cover some other topic. All right, thank you for the comments, everyone. This is very, very exciting uh, and uh, productive uh, conversation here now on the live. All right, so let's see. The next comment is from Lot Honor. He says, Hi, Kay, I am a college student based on your strategy. You're trading in M5, but can we trade on H1 or higher time frame? Because I don't have lots of time for swaying charts. Yes, you can. Yep, that is possible. So let's say, so myself, I am a intraday swing trader. So basically, I follow the daily or the forward chart. But uh, let's say you want you want your style to be the swing trader, then um, let's say you, you can follow the weekly trend. So let's say you can screen the chart on the weekly basis and see which one is trending. And in Forex pairs, most of the time it's ranging on the weekly chart. But uh, let's see. Let me just pick which one is trending on the weekly chart. So like this one, um, pound CAD. Weekly says the Kumo's down, Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen down, and the Chikou span below the candles. And the market is about to break the previous support level, 1.6784 level. It's about to break. So you can look for the sell chance here. But before that, you can confirm it in the daily chart. So you look at the daily chart and you find daily chart is also going downwards this way. And then you can take trace, you can look for the confirmations in 1 or 30 minute time frames. So in 1 hour chart, you take out the Bollinger Band and Stochastics and look for 3 confirmations to enter the trade. Or you can do it in a 30 minute chart. In this way, you use the same strategy, but simply by shifting time frames higher, you can become a swing trader. Or you can, if you want to trade more per day, then uh, you can follow the one hour chart direction. So in one hour chart, you take the HM5 lines and you screen charts, and once you find the trendy market, let's see, in one hour chart, let's see which one's trending. Yeah, so Euro Pound is very good, one hour downtrend. Kumo down, Hijun Sen, Tenkan Sen down, and Chikou Span below the candles. So you take one hour chart downtrend and simply look for a trading edge in 5 or 15 minute time frames. In this case, there is no confirmation uh, time frames, but simply you look for the selling edge on the lower time frames. And in this way, you can be an intraday trader. Because most likely in one hour chart, a trend stops within the day. So you can categorize it as a intraday trader by shifting the time frame a bit lower, but using the same strategy effect this way. So but uh, based on my back testing, uh, my strategy works the best on the daily chart or the forward chart in Forex pairs. And I don't trade exotics, I only trade uh, majors and minors. So uh, it's, it's for these 21 pairs on my watch list. Yeah, so let me cover some other comments now. Golam says, my problem is I can't trial my stop loss and as soon as 20 to 30 pips profit, I couldn't control my emotion. How to overcome this problem? Okay, so hold on, let me see. I think uh, simply you can, um, you can use the trading stop 
There is a function called a trading stop in MT4, MT5. So after you enter the market, you right click on the position and you choose 200 points or 300 points, which are equivalent to 20 or 30 pips. So once the market goes up towards the direction 20 or 30 pips, then the system automatically uh, you know, draws, uh, moves the stop loss to break even. And as the market goes up, 20 pips in the range uh, to the stop, it automatically trails along the way. So I think uh, you can do that and I think you overcome, uh, you can control your emotion in this way. Because it just does it automatically that way. Right, so let's see. Let me look at some other comments now. All right, so the next question is uh, from Ivan. He says, um, hey, do you sometimes use buy stop or buy limit in your trades? If yes, how do you manage the psychology by using those methods? Um, so for myself, I trade manually and I exit manually. So I don't really use the pending orders. Buy stop, buy limit, I don't really use them. Because I used to use them before, but uh, oftentimes uh, I get... I get stopped out without knowing myself in the market. So let's say sometimes there are fake outs. I wanted to buy here, for example, in this case, if I wanted to buy here and I put the stop, stop order here and it takes, it takes it and reverses backwards all the way. And, and that's why I don't use the pending orders anymore. But instead, I want to see how the market breaks at that point. Because if I can wait until the candle close in one hour, I know that it will, it will be fake. It was fake out. But uh, if I can't monitor the chart until the end of the candle close, I never know if that's going to be a fake out or not. And if I have a pending order here, then that will be executed and the market reverses backwards. So that's why um, afterwards I wanted to see myself with my eyes on this moving market and take trades manually and put the stop loss manually and exit manually and move the stop loss break even manually by my own confirmations. Um, so uh, that's why I don't use the pending orders and I can also so in this case, in one hour chart, you only see one single week here. But what I monitor is, let me just go back the chart. So I, I see the week pointing up first. But if you, if you go down to the five minute chart, for example, if you go down to five, then you know in one hour candlestick, it only look the, the week pointing upwards. But in five, you see the details on the candlesticks. So if I, if I were watching the market real time, and if I were to buy, then uh, I want to first of all see the breakout of the previous resistance level. So most likely, I will be looking into buy somewhere here around. And uh, if I monitor the chart, the market goes up nicely, like this way. And it almost hit this level and afterwards, it reverses backwards. So, in this case, practically speaking, I don't buy because the market hasn't reached the previous high yet. Or simply, let's say I buy here. For example, in money trades, this is the beauty about the money trading is that the, uh, let's say I buy on this bullish candlestick. Let's say I buy here. And I put the stop loss below the previous low usually. So my stop loss will be from here. And I take the stop loss pips 
And in this case, it's uh, 10 pips only. So this is too tight. So I will just put the stop loss here. And I have the stop loss of 22, 23 pips down. And that will be my trade. Because this is in 5 minute chart, the stop loss is very tight. Only 23 pips stop loss. And I expect the market goes up. But if I talk about the exit timing, I want to do so manually. Because uh, if the market goes up this way, then uh, okay, the market is going up towards my direction, so that's good. But uh, afterwards, you can see that the market is now ranging. And this is inside bar. You can exactly see that there is an inside bar. So as I monitor the chart, like this way, if the market breaks this, this uh, long bearish candlestick low, if the market breaks that level, then I want to exit manually. But uh, we never know. If this is uptrending still, then this engulfing can be broken upwards and the market may continuously go up this way. If that's the case, I keep holding that position, of course. But in this case, now that I see that there is an engulfing correction in 5, then I want to exit after the breakout of the support level. So in manually, if I trade manually, then I will either exit here. But, but in this case, this is still a bit shallow breakout. So most likely, I will wait for one more candlestick. And if, it, if the next candlestick really breaks the support, then I will just close it. So... I just go that the next one. The next one was a fake out and now it reverses backwards. So I just keep holding still. And let's see, the market goes up in the range. Okay, now I start to see reverse. Uh, you know, this is descending P wave. So um so if the market continue to go down this way on this P wave. And once it breaks the P wave downwards this way, then I want to exit. Most likely in this case, I will exit here. And I monitor the chart in this way. So let's see. Okay, so now there's a breakout and I will exit here. So this will be my exit. But because I monitor manually like this, I know exactly when to exit. But if I don't monitor manually and put the stop loss all the way down here until the market hits a stop loss, I can exit and that I can I, I'll be losing more in that case. So in this case, I bought it here and I exit here and my loss in this trade will be only like three pips or four pips. And in this way I can minimize the losses. This is a loss, but this is very small loss and psychologically it's healthy and in the future winners can cover these small losses so easily and that's why I trade like this way. But uh, if you're not familiar with this kind of strategy, then you can simply exit once the previous support level is breakout. So you can monitor the chart. And once the market breaks, like this level, there is a previous support level here. So once the market breaks that level, then you can simply exit there. But in terms of stop loss, this is too tight, only 10 pips. So if you have 10 pips of very tight stop loss, then if the market reverses backwards from here, then you will be in the loss very soon and you might have too many losing trades. So I don't recommend you to have too tight stop loss. My recommendation for everybody is to have at least 15 pips of the stop loss. 15 pips or bigger stop loss would be okay. So that's why I took 23 pips of stop loss and on this stop loss, I make it 2% on my Forex account. So even if the market reverses all the way back to this level, I only lose 2%, which is still minimum. But uh, because I look for an exit timing manually, I can exit much, much earlier 
and I can even have less drawdown in this case. So this is roughly around like 1%. So the mid level is 1% and this level is like 0.5%. So if I exit exactly on this line, I only lose 0.5% of my account. So this, lo this loss is very, very small and I can continue to trade. And once the future big trade, big winners can cover these very small losses. So speaking of a psychology, that is also very healthy too. If you lose too big, then you have more frustrations. You have more emotion, you know, bad emotion. But uh, if you lose very few, very less like this, then uh, your emotion will be staying healthy. And also uh, you can still trade. You have still account, you know, funds in your account and you can still trade basically. So never lose big is a key to success. If you lose too big, then you better improve on your risk management. Maybe your lot sizing is too high or stop, stop loss is too wide. Um, so in a psychologically, it's not really healthy. So I think that is my advice for that comment. All right, so let's look into some other comments now. Thank you for joining everyone. Great to see you here, as always. All right. The so Nifty chart I will cover tomorrow. So let me quickly cover some other comments now, because I will be ending the live in about uh, five minutes or so. So let's see, Archback says, what are the strategies you use before setting with Ichimoku? I was using many, many strategies. I was using uh, moving average. I was using the uh, uh, GMMA and uh, RSI, Scarsics. I was using also RSA Bollinger Bands and uh, Parabolic SAR. I was using pivot points. I was using all sorts of uh, indicator strategies. All right, let's see. Karan says, uh, Sir K, when I take trades, I feel like butterfly in my stomach. Oh, that's not good. You never want to have a stomach with the butterflies on it. Yeah, you have to feel safe and you have to feel very, very easy on your, on your uh, emotion. Roge says, I tried crypto for about three months and I couldn't turn a profit. For the meantime, I'm back on back to what I'm most comfortable with, the stocks. I did buy some BTC and Ethereum, uh, though, as to not miss the action. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's kind of funny that sometimes you don't really do good on the Bitcoin or in the cryptos. But when you start to trade Forex, you do very good. Sometimes it happens. So, you know, we can be flexible. And you can just, you know, go into other markets and see how it goes. But before that, you have to study and backtest and be confident on your strategy. All right, let's see. All right, hello, Winner Forever. Thank you for joining here on the Ichimoku community. So after this, there will be an Ichimoku membership live stream and you can join it from the Discord in Ichimoku. So please make sure to access on my website and follow the instruction of how to join. And please, I will be waiting for you on the live stream afterwards. But once again, uh, winner forever. Thank you for joining and stay gold. Let's see. And thank you for joining everybody on this live stream today. Commodity says, uh, what will wheat and corn look like in the future? Um, I can give some analysis next week, but not today. Today, let me focus on some psychology or money management related topics. Johan says, how to add price theory in TradingView? 
you can basically uh, you know add add this uh, add manually. So I have a couple of my uh, analysis on with uh, with time cycles and price theory, but I do this manually. So yeah, simply you can add these lines manually and put the vertical lines and horizontal lines and labels and get these lines like this. All right, Mr. Fernandez, you're welcome. All right, so Hussein says, uh, Sir, what about being patient or wasting time in trading? Time is also important, I guess. Yes, time is very important. Time is the most important component. Yep, that is true. So, but being patient is not wasting time. It's not, it's not the same. You know, being patient requires discipline. And it's not really wasting time. Yeah, it's different. All right, let's see. Hello, sir. I want to ask you about the name of the brokerage company that allows you to trade in Forex contracts. Uh, I'm using the xmtrading.com. And it's been working great for myself. But uh, it may different. It may be different among the regions. So uh, I always recommend everybody to do your research on your region because uh, the trustable brokers might be different. All right. Who says I sell XAUUSD from 1760? Okay. So I think gold is now. In the bullish mode so you better exit right away you can keep holding especially if it breaks the resistance level 1868.46 then you better really exit that position all right Gabby you're welcome the man says Kason, what's your advice to beginner selecting the pairs means dealing with multiple pairs or uh, focus on two or three pairs is the best. I think for the beginners, you can only focus on two or three pairs first. You never want to look at many, many pairs because it might confuse you. So, and only pick the, one, pick the ones that are familiar with you. So for myself, uh, I started my trades, trading journey with USD JPY because, uh, you know, JPY, I was born and raised in Japan, so Japanese economy was is familiar with me. And also I studied in, in the US, and that's why I know the US economy. So that's why I picked USDJPY to trade the first one year. And then I've added Euro, I've added the Pound, and then I have these 21 pairs on my watch list. So, yeah, you can start small and, you know, have more pairs on your watch list. All right, let's see. How smart? Uh, I can't get how to install the TalkieBox. In TalkieBox, I have a couple of videos. If you come to my website and scroll down, and you can find TalkieBox on Case Trading Strategy. So please click on this picture here and you can find some Pokebox indicator, how I set up. All right. Yeah, good to see you everyone. Thank you for joining. All right. So I guess uh, that's it for today's live stream. I do see more comments here now, but unfortunately I can't cover everything. But uh, I will check, come back and check these comments after uh, I do the Ichimoku membership live. Because sometimes I come back these, you know, chats with myself on the previous live streams and just enjoy these comments. So uh, yeah, 
I guess uh, that's it for today's live stream. So uh, thank you for joining everyone once again. And I hope you have a great, great weekend. So until I see you next time, please stay healthy, stay safe, and stay gold. Right? Matane everyone. Thank you.